going to be solving for x and all the problems on tonight. And all of them are coming off that rational section, that rational topic. So that means that we're going to expect lots of fractions. And basically, a rational means there's polynomials in top numerator and bottom denominator. Um, even the constant 3 here, even the constant 3 here, okay? That's a, that's a constant line. That's technically, you could say in a lot of ways, a polynomial downstairs with an x to the 0 um, uh, uh, variable there. Um, most of the time, we don't treat them the same way we treat them as the rational functions, but I will be doing something which I call blowing out the fractions, just removing the fractions, multiplying by the GCF of the denominators, which is the common denominator, across the board, okay, and, hope, and hoping to remove, to blowing out fractions. If we can turn these into basic quadratic equations or even sometimes pre-algebra equations, that's always easier. The first one right here, multiplying by 3 on each of the terms. There are three terms in here. Three terms. One, two, three terms. So as you get used to this, I suggest you put a mini little 3 in here instead of just doing what I did with the red and saying 3 on the outside, which is basically my notation to remind myself to distribute and as well as do things to both sides. Technically, with the red bars here, you're not allowed to put parentheses around all this stuff. I do it as a way of notating to myself to remind myself, distribute everywhere, and also do it to both sides. On number two right there, what am I going to multiply by to get rid of all the fractions, even though there's only one fraction? X. And so the same idea, I'm going to multiply by an X across the board there. So again, if you're working, <clears throat> if, you're, if you're getting used to this, it might help you to put what you're multiplying by on each one of the terms. So let's go ahead and finish this first one off. If I multiply by a 3 on this term, cancels leaves x minus 2. Bring down the plus sign. 3 cancels. 3 over 3 makes 1. I used to call that whatify because I had a mentor teacher that used that phrase. Whatify said it makes a 1. 3 out of 3 is 1. 1 times anything is pretty much not needed. We are removing it by creating these ones and then removing unnecessary ones. So that leaves the x plus 5. I don't need the parentheses because there's no negative on the outside or multiplier on the outside. It's the only time I really bring down the parentheses carefully. Okay, with the plus sign, I don't need to. 3 over 3, or 3 cancels and leaves a 1. And now we've turned this into a simple, what I consider more of a pre-algebra problem, which makes it a heck of a lot easier than the intimidating one that we saw originally. Okay. I'm going to leave that one for you. Let's focus on number two. Blow out the fractions. Blow out the fractions. Number two over here. So what do we do? Multiply by x. I'm going to put a little mini x on each of them. Or in this case, I'm going to try to visualize it. I'm going to try to visualize my distri distributing skill. x times x all the way in the front. x times x, x squared. x times a positive 2. 2x. Two and now the x times 15 over x, the way I think about that, the x is canceled. They make 1. They leave 1 times 15, or just 15. Don't forget, when we see a quadratic equation with both the quadratic term and the linear term, quadratic term and the linear term, that means the best method is to set it equal to 0, hopefully factor. If not, we've got quad form, quadratic formula, as well as completing the square. So let's go ahead and finish this one off. Whoops, got a positive 2x there. Bring over the 15, minus 15 on each side. Bring over the 15. Minus 15 on each side. Always want to look at factors. Let's take a look, see if any of these factors with that minus sign, with the minus sign on the 15, it means I'm only looking for differences of these factors. Just quickly look which ones have, which of these factor pairs have a difference of two. We see it now. I usually write them in first. I write them in first and then figure out the signs that make sense. Positive on the five. That'll make a middle term of 2x. Double check it. Negative 3x. Positive 5x definitely checks. What makes 0? What makes 0? Favorite question in mathematics. x equals 3 and negative 5. Box that at the moment. Probably don't want to box it yet because often with rationals, we have extraneous solutions. Some books actually call that bogus solutions. Okay. So we're going to take a look and make sure, and that's what they're talking about here. Support your answer numerically. They have the question up here, up here in the statement. Support your answer 
numerically. Remember, we try to look at things in three different fashions. Algebraically, I just did that. Numerically, plug and chug, I'm going to do that one in a second. And then later, you can see support your answer graphically on the next session. Okay, the next section, excuse me. That is uh, uh, where we'll look at the graphs and take a look and see if we're actually getting the same intersections. We want to try to connect it all different ways. So if I plug and chug a 3 and a negative 5, this should be true. So let's double check it. If I plug and chug a 3, I get 3 plus 2 is equal to 15 over plug and chug a 3. Is that right? Yes, that checks. And then a negative 5, negative 5 plus 2 over 15 over negative 5, and again, that checks. Both are the same. Jumping down to 13. 13. Same trick to start off. We want to blow out fractions, but of course I picked a very mean one right now. Most of the time, most of the time, these, the publishers of the textbook will like to make those two binomials that I just underlined pretty much the factors of the guy on the other side, the equation on the other side. So the way I would anticipate this basically kind of hope for it is that you hope that the two on the left binomials multiply to make the denominator on the right is that the case can you guys foil that out and see if we've got the two factors on the denominator on the left here and here do they multiply and make the denominator on the right a lot of textbooks will design these basically to make it so you don't have to multiply by so much okay so, let me clean this up a little bit here. Now we're going to multiply by the GCF, the, the greatest common factor, or in this case in the denominator, the greatest common denominator. So, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to show you the same kind of notation that I used before. What I'm going to multiply by is an x plus 5 times an x minus 2. I'm going to multiply this across the board, across the board. So, I'm going to put those, both of those binomials, Visually in my mind, I'm going to put them both right up here, and right up here, and right up here. Now, I don't physically do that because it just crowds up the problem and it's hard to really make notes of that. So I'm trying to test your visualization of this. Can you visually see what happens when I put the two binomials up here? What gets canceled in the first term with the 3x numerator? The x plus 5 will get canceled. So in a sense, I'm visually in my mind canceling one of the binomials with the x plus 5. Do you see what's left to multiply? 3x with the other binomial, which is x minus 2. Does everybody see that? No problem. We're cool. Again, I'm multiplying these two. Put them right up here, kind of visually, right next to the 3x. And again, even trying to do this without putting them in clutters up my problem. And I don't like to clutter it up too much. Okay. So visually, x plus 5 cancels. 3x times x minus 2 is left. Same thing with the 1 numerator in the second term. Same thing with the 1 numerator. What gets canceled? What is left? A 1 times a 1 times x minus 2 cancels. x plus 5 is left. Over here, on the other side, since we agreed, that the trinomial and the denominator there was the multiplied items x plus 5 and x minus 2. Do you see that they cancel entirely? That basically I'm going to show you like this. These two cancel this entire denominator. That's no different than the 3 over 3 up above. It's just bigger with lots of variables and numbers and symbols. But it should be the same part of your brain that canceled the 3s easily can make sense of canceling these two multiplied x plus 5 x minus 2 times the trinomial or excuse me over the trinomial down below they cancel what's left on the right side the last term just the seven now we're looking at a regular algebra problem we're looking at a straight regular algebra problem okay multiply it out blow out the parentheses i like to use the phrase blow out obviously 3x squared minus 6x again one times that's so just going to leave the x plus 5 and we got a 7 on the right double check did i miss anything i think we're okay looks like we got another quadratic situation so i'm going to set it equal to zero after collecting like terms these two x's combine to make negative 5x i'm going to bring the 7 over so i'm going to subtract 7 on both sides looks like we got a negative 2 equals zero whenever i try to break down a binomial excuse me a trinomial 
quadratic trinomial with a, with a constant other than 1 in front. So I've got this 3 in front. So the coefficient of x squared is 3. I usually put the 3 up there, and I just run the 1 and 2, and I try to play. 3 times 2, again, we're looking at a difference. Don't ever look at waste time looking at adding them when you got a minus sign. The minus sign guarantees you're going to get a subtraction moment, a difference moment. It saves you time. Vice versa, if you ever have a positive on the last term, you only look at adding. You don't look at subtracting. What a waste of time. I don't want to do that. So 3 times 2 is 6. Difference with 1. 3 times 2 is 6 over here. Okay. Difference with 1. Is that what I'm looking for? Found it right off the bat. I got lucky. So I'm going to make sure that I put the 3x where it can get multiplied to the 2. And if you think of foiling, that means the 2 needs to go way over on the other binomial. What's left? You have to have an x and you have to have the 1. Again, I always do the signs last. It's safer. Okay, and I need a negative 5. You can see that this is going to be the 6x. So we better make sure that that's negative. This one's positive. We are set equal to 0. Favorite question to end us off. What makes 0? 2. That's the easy one, right? 2. A little algebra in your head here. 3x plus 1 equals 0. What x makes 0? Subtract, divide. Everybody see it? Subtract, divide. Negative 1 third. Okay, come back. We're supposed to support this graphically. So we want to take out our TIs. We want to punch this into the calculator. And we want to see the connection between the intersections and those two solutions. And those two solutions. So we're going to take out take a look at the original equations here. We're going to put a 3x divided by parentheses. Make sure you use parentheses for any items that are more than one term on the bottom, like the x plus 5 that I'm putting in. So x plus 5, we got a plus 1 divided by parentheses, x minus 2, x minus 2. I'm going to go to the second equation for the right side. I usually make y1 the left side, y2 the right side. 7 divided by parentheses, x squared plus 3x minus 10. Leave that's right, double checking it. Okay, And we should anticipate what these graphs look like, at least the right side graph. Right side graph, we're anticipating some asymptotes. We're anticipating uh, uh, either what our intercepts are because of what we've done recently. I always start with a zoom 6. Sometimes my graph is uh, completely off. That must be y1. There's two asymptotes there, and there is y2. It's hard to see the difference between them, so sometimes it's best to go back to y equals, go to the far left side, and if you can, you can change the way the dots work. Sometimes you can make solid lines rather than just light lines. Okay, so I'm going to make y1 the solid line and y2 the light line and regraph this. So there's y1. Don't forget those vertical lines are asymptotes because we're on connected mode. Okay, and you can see as they were drawn in, I saw an intersection right here, right here, and I saw an intersection over on the right side near, near 2, it looked like. Um, we can also verify it by using the calculator. So I saw an intersection, it looks like right at the left of the y-axis, okay? So let me see if I can use the trace button and get you close to it. Just on the trace button, I saw an intersection right about there. And then I saw an intersection over on the right side somewhere right over there. Okay, those are definitely places where is x is equal to 2 and negative 1 third. We could also verify it with the second. I close that level, sorry. Second trace button. We can do intersections. Okay, first curve, second curve, usually I'm just enter, 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 so this time I will do that. Oops, lost that screen, bring it back. So enter, enter, enter. Let's see which one it picks up. X equals point, negative point, three, 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 three. So I'm verifying it. Hopefully that helps.